So I, uh, I made a promise to myself New Year's Eve that I'd stop watching YouTube. Um, obviously, I put stuff out, but the, the stuff which is floating about, um, not only is it negative and toxic, and um, I don't do drama, but it's also um, just made up, made up stories. But one one um, video I watched last night, I think it was a guy called Ray Bang Bang Hill. And uh, I watched, I think he did a couple of videos on Paul Sykes and he was kind of mentioning Lee Duffy. And uh, obviously I did free books on Duffy. Uh, I did two documentaries as well on him. And uh, I did free books on Paul Sykes, which is, um, I know it is taking a long time, but it was um, signed up by Western Edge Pictures to be a film. Um, these things take time. Obviously, COVID ruined it. Um, but it's happening. So I, um, uh, moral of the story is I got to speak to a lot of people. Uh, and I've said it time and time again that, uh, you know, I mean, I get, I often get messages saying, um, Duffy wasn't, sorry, Sykes wasn't all that when Duffy put it on him. Uh, I mean, you know, like it's going to bug me. Um, they're just book, book, book subjects to me. I've got no connection to him. Uh, I never met either of them, but I spoke to a lot of people who did. And um, the facts of the matter are, is Sykes and Duffy only met twice. Um, so this was confirmed by John. Sykes told this to John Spensley. It was uh, sadly not here. And um, I obviously spoke to a, quite a number of Duffy's really close friends, his best friend, um, the guy who held Duffy as he was dying, was in the club about a month when they met in the Havana. Obviously, the Spencers brought him in, 91. Um, and I spoke to the screw. Um, so they briefly met in about 1988, it was in Durham. And um, there was a massive line in between them from screws. And then quickly they were... They were put at the end of the prison and then Duffy or well, Sykes, they were out. Um, but Ray, Bang Bang Hill, we kind of touched on a subject last night of, you know, I mean, I interviewed, um, I did an interview him. I went into prison and uh, I I seen his son, excuse me, Paul Sykes Jr. And obviously I've kind of spoke with various people, you know, um, one of his wives, his sister is, and um, he was kind of gay for the stay, if you like. Um, you know, there's no doubt about it. I mean, John Spencer said to me, he said he would just openly admit. I said, yeah. And um, you know, Paul Sykes Junior said to me, he said, if I was that was here now, um, he would say, yeah, that was the kind of thing I'd done. And um, you know, I spoke to some of Sykes's really close friends, like your Delroy Showers and. And uh, got it back and asked him about the, the Duffy Sykes thing. But people can put stuff out on here and there's no subs. It's, it's utterly made up. And um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people on here who um, they've got no sense of reality or realism. Uh, they've got no self-awareness of one, how making themselves, how bad they make themselves look. And two, it's just fairy tales, just totally fabricated. You know, um, I've I've done some massive, massive research. Uh, you know, I interviewed Eddie Richardson, who was in the whole prison with Sykes for years. Uh, um, I, I asked Chris Lambriano about it, who was next door to Paul Sykes for three years. Uh, I spoke to Charles Bronson. Um various various people and um you know and they said no matter how big and tough Sykes was you couldn't do things like that and um I was with the governor of Hull Prison there's a picture on my page he's in a Paul Sykes documentary so I was I was with him I spent a bit of time with him in London about six months ago and uh he had Sykes in his system for 20 years and he 
never said anything, anything whatsoever like that. I interviewed um, the chief of West Yorkshire Police about four years ago, and um, he had access to Paul Sykes's record, and it was mightily impressive. I don't mean that as in good. I mean that as in awesome, as in there was a lot of offences. Um, oh, staggering amounts. You know, obviously the the acts of violence. And then even in his later years, he was arrested every other week for drunken disorderly or um, breaking conditions, bail conditions, whatever. Uh, half the time he wanted to be in prison because his demise was so great. And, um, you know, he was getting tortured by that from 2000 and, 2003, the last four years of his life, maybe even the last five years of his life. Um, the last three were hard, you know, were like, he was basically feral. He was, uh, couldn't be, you know, it'd be like going to the desert, getting a honey badger and trying to train it to be a dog. Um, he just was wild. You know, quite often people would wake up and he'd be asleep in the front garden. But um, many years before that, you know, Peter Fury said uh, all these people who used to slag him off uh, wouldn't have looked at him sideways. And, um, yeah, that was, you know, rare. Uh, I'm going to start watching your stuff, mate. You um, you were very accurate. And um, what are the things you said uh, made a lot of sense. Particularly, uh, I, I know both life story um, quite well. I'm going to be a technical advisor to the film. Um, you know, there's lots of things that I can, I know his life, I know certain people who would have, could have done the story far greater than I could, uh, are not interested. They're just staying silent. Um, and the, the, um, they understand why there's, um, the interest. And, uh, as I said, the interest is great. And, um, you know, he did say, he did say, you know, one day, once upon a, many years ago, I spoke to Kenny, the tailor, and he said, you know what, Kenny, and yes, I come, they're going to write films and make books on me and all that. And he's, and Duffy said the same. And I actually read that with my own eyes. Um, I read a, a prison letter dated April 91. And Duffy said the same. And um, he used to say it was best mate all the time. You can put this in the book when I'm gone. Remember this. Put this in the book when I'm gone. Very sad, considering that was a 26-year-old kid. And he's talking about, you know, like he's 88 and he's terminal. Um, but yeah, Ray Bang Bang Hill, I applaud, mate. I think you, you think you were bang on with what you said. And uh, yeah, I will be watching a lot more of your stuff. And uh, as I said, a lot of people can put stuff out for views and that. And, um, you know, I've had confirmed to me by a prison officer, um, the incident 88, I've had confirmed. John Spencer Sykes would, was very close to John and he, he said, I only ever met that kid from Borough twice. And, um, you know, the Spencer's brought him in the Havana. Um, or was it the speakeasy then? Was it, I think it was the Havana. Uh what else was there? And um, yeah, there was a there was a meeting in eighty eight, and then there was the one in ninety one about a month. And and Sykes went to shake his hand, and Duffy just full of ecstasy, basically mocked him, belittled him, turned his back to him, and said, "Who does he think he is, me?" And uh, and uh, but there was nineteen years difference, and although Sykes was, um, so that was only that was about eighteen months after that document documentary was aired, um. You know, Sykes was very much a functioning alcoholic then. Still a very, very scary man. But, uh, you know, Duffy was a lot more younger and athletic and fitter. But um, the story of, um, you know, the... <laughs> I was going to say a word there. I don't want it to um, get a strike. So the stories of um, these kind of outrageous... Um, very dark and sinister attacks behind closed cells are uh, are absolute nonsense. Um, but people will do things for views, and you'd be surprised. And um, you know, 
there's a lot of people on YouTube don't have a lot of common sense. And uh, I, I'm always amazed with the people who follow them and believe the lies rather than the circus acts. But uh, there you go. All lies. Complete nonsense.